Hey guys, Cassie TV here with another Path of Exile video, and today I'm going to cover the different type of best specters that is in the current state of the league, 3.24 Necropolis, and I'm going to talk about which builds that are going to be using them that I have guides for, in what capacity, what they do, and what kind of supports that you either will be using or could be using. Essentially, I'll try to cover as many aspects of this as possible, and which specters are best for certain approaches to the game. A lot of people have been asking me, yo Gassy, what is the best specter? Gassy, what's the best specter? Gassy, what's the absolute best specter? Absolute or best? I mean, there's only one best, right? The answer is very tricky to, to give because the differences are all depending on the state of budget your character's in, what kind of build it is, are you using utility specters or damage dealing specters or both? So let's talk about some approaches to this. The list of specters is very simple. We're going to have a war caller, which is an ancestral, but uh, league specific specter. We have the Moon Dancer, which is a League-specific Spectre as well. These two Spectres are currently available in Necropolis and not available moving forward because they're not part of the core game. But we have other Spectres part of the core game, such as the previous old-type Spectres like Arena Masters and Pale Seraphim. But we also have the Spectre Leader, which is also a Tier 17 Spectre, which means that after this League is over, unless they make any changes, the Spectre Leader will be one of those Spectres that will follow us. Then we have classical specters such as primals from the harvest encounters like primal rex or primal crush claws and stuff like that so which specters are then the best well let's just crack into it shall we before we crack into it i do want to say thank you to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel i do appreciate it if you watch this video and you happen to enjoy it when you're done watching it do consider liking and subscribing let's start with damage dealing specters now there are currently based of my own testing and a lot of people have been contributing with the feedback and testing purposes. Uh, Bolter and many other people have been helping out a lot with this. We're going to talk about damage dealing specters. And when I say damage dealing specters, I mean when your specters are meant to be used as a main source of damage output. Moon Dancer was the craziest things I've ever seen uh, when we first encountered them. And that is because they have a tremendous amount of HP, allowing them to be used as early as as soon as you get access to the Spectre Gem. If you can level a new character and you get a Spectre Gem, you can equip and summon out your Moon Dancers and they will completely obliterate the entire campaign. There are also fantastic Spectres to you be used as a low budget approach where enemies aren't too rip risky in bad gear, if you will. And the reason for this is also that we have a position where single target boss fights are not too scary. The problem with the Moon Dancers is that there's going to be a brick wall where they start to fall off, and that is because they do not cast or attack their spell. They are triggering this on a timer, and then they trigger it even more if they are uh, actually moving, which means modifiers to movement speed increases the amount of projectiles they shoot, which is really awkward. But this means that they are capped in how well you can scale them towards endgame, meaning that Moon Dancers are one of the craziest early game specters you can use. And most builds that would be using this is essentially any type of leveling build. Any build that uses Utility Spectre can just smack these on early on instead of having buffing Spectres. Most prominently, we have builds such as the uh, Sumancer using this. Now, what's really cool with the Sumancer is that in the build guide that I have posted on a PUE Vault, uh, which looks like this, uh, you have the availability in the PUB section, a little note about the current iteration of the new All Flame Spectre Moon Dancers. Now, keep in mind, again, that's only for this league. And this link here will uh, provide you to the setup, and in which case we're using greater volume, minion damage, minion speed, cold penetration, hypothermia. Now, there's quite a few different setups that you can use, but what I want to talk about is two things specifically. Um, one is obviously the minion speed being their movement speed to help trigger them faster. The other aspect of it is uh, the approach of um, the Greater Volley. You want to give them as many projectiles as possible. So Greater Volley is very important because of the extra projectiles, but the reason we use Greater Volley instead of GMP is because the projectiles themselves will then land in a clustered line, which allows them to do better single target damage, which is something they lack. Now, something else to add to this is that for the sake of clearing, we use faster projectiles for these guys. And the reason we use faster projectiles for the Moon Dancers is very simple. They have a wider range of where they're shooting. They're also casting mortars. These mortars will actually collide on ground or if they collide with an enemy target. This is how they are not completely obliterated in terms of single target damage if you have a faster projectile. 
on the other hand, projectiles that if that might have landed next to the boss and done damage to the boss will now miss the boss and land further away and miss it entirely. That is why faster projectile turns into hypothermia or slower projectile when you're doing endgame pinnacle bosses with moon dancers. The problem again is after the initial endgame, red tier maps, first couple of void stones and whatnot, moon dancer starts to fall off and you kind of want to switch away from them. So when it comes to the Sumancer build, when you move in from moon dancer specters into using utility specters, that is something I would do once I get a what's called a minion helmet. That is a hypothermia, minion damage supported Elder Shaper helmet. That's the kind of position where I would go back to the build guide and look at the utility specters and therefore just run with those instead. Now, what kind of specters would you then switch to? Because we're not going to deal main source of damage with our specters anymore as we're now back on our regular zoom answer build. Instead, we're going to be using the best setup for utility support specters. However, there's, again, different utility best choice of support specters depending on the build. So for the Sumancer, that would be a Primal Crush Claw because of the cold damage taken. We will run a Spectral Leader that I'll be talking about in this video. We're also going to be running an Arena Master. And the fourth one will be a, a, a War Caller. That would be the list of specters I would deem to be the best for Sumancer specifically as it is a cold damage dealing build. If you're looking at builds like Bama uh, from Previ, for example, or many other generic builds like Poison SRS, for example, the best support specters would actually be in order of efficiency, Spectral Leader, Arena Master, War Caller, and Pale Seraphim in that order. So that's kind of like the top choice of actual generic damage dealing specters, which will like doesn't really care what kind of element of damage they're doing. It's just generic speed and efficiency that's coming to the table. So what exactly is then do happening when it comes to the war caller and the actual spectral leader? So I'm going to talk about this real quick. And that is first and foremost that the war caller has a pretty much a permanent uptime of a thing called horn blow. This is also something that is only available in the current state of the league uh, in Necropolis through the old flame encounters. And these guys are giving onslaught, which is 20% movement, attack and cast speed to you and your minions in a radius. Pretty much a uh, full uptime on this. That is what they are doing, which is worse than an Arena Master, which is doing that and gives 20% increased damage. That's why the Arena Master is prioritized over the War Caller. The other sports Spectre I was talking about, which is basically one of the top choices, is a Spectral Leader. Now, the Spectral Leader is a very, very specific. They have a 80% uptime from a spell called the Speed Aura Atlas Uber. This is a 0.7 cast time ability with a 10 second cooldown and it gives literal 20% action speed, which is one of the craziest, most strong buff you can find in the entire game with an 8-second uh, duration. Now, keep in mind, this spell from the Spectre is tagged with duration, which allows you to run duration support as an example, should you choose to. I don't think this is super important, but I definitely think that it should be pointed out. The war caller itself shouldn't have any sort of specific extra support teams to it, whilst the, Raiders, the spectral leader has the possibility of doing such things, like having a duration support, as an example. Again, not something I would focus on or if, uh, prioritize, but it should be mentioned. So the support specters, uh, support gems for these specters has more to do with the utility approach that you would normally do anyway, such as meat shield, elemental army, uh, minion life, and that kind of approach. However, moving on to the other part of specters and that is damage dealing specters what do we do when we can't use moon dancers if you decide to play either a pure specter build or a specter build or a build that is focusing specters for main source of damage output in general once we move over from moon dancers and we want to use something else that actually scales for endgame the switch period or the switch time frame would happen when you have the pos position where you are moving from three specters to four specters there are two scenarios where this happens. One is if you get a Delve-only delve drop mo a chest piece that has plus one to maximum specters. Or your specter gem is now level 25, either through the use of the bo unique Bones of Ulur boots, plus one or plus two levels from your weapon, maybe plus one from your shield, plus one or plus two from your helmet, will allow for these things to happen. You can also get plus one from your amulet in some cases, or even plus three from a replica. However, 
the amulet should not be used in this. So, uh, we use for replica dragon. We are going to be using Perkwell's toe for lucky lightning damage hit. And the reason for this is that once you move into four specters, you will then have a beneficial damage output and a functionality of the wretched defiler. Now, the wretched defilers are, are a casting minion that is dealing pure lightning damage. And the problem with these is a little bit how they behave. So I'm going to talk about the support gems used by the Wretch Defiler. And the really crazy part about this is the strength and power provided by the action speed that is coming from the actual Spectral Leader is so strong that this is one of the very few times over the past decade where a build that focuses Spectres on main source of damage output would not only have their Spectres be of one sort of type, we're going to have three Wretch Defilers and one Spectral Leader. This is going to net you a speed buff, but most importantly, an actual DPS output gain compared to having four Wretch Defilers. So that is the setup. And if you go into five Spectres, you just add another Wretch Defiler. And for the actual approach of the, um, the, the Spectre Helmet, we would run the same setup. One Spectral Leader and the remaining Spectres would be Wretch Defilers. Now, in the descriptions below, you will find a link to my PUB that I've made, which is a mock-up, thrown together, low-budget, Wretch Defiler PUB for the Spectre build that I'm working on on stream. You swing by the stream if you have any questions. So that is available in the links in the descriptions. There is also a link to my build guide hub in which you can find the Zoomancer, where the Moon Dancer build is available as well as shown in the video. So Wretch Defiler is very, very tricky. They basically are casting and they have nine projectiles fired in a spiral, but these spirals do not happen in a spiral, but rather as a fan in front of them, which means that they don't have a circular 360 AOE projectile shooting. This means that you're going to want to have the specters as close to the enemy target as possible, and then they will hit with all of their projectiles. The problem with this is that they have a tendency of literally running away and then shooting the boss from afar. So it was actually a net DPS loss to convocate them on top of a boss because they actually stopped shooting many times over to run away and then start shooting from a distance. Even if I had Predator as a support gem for them, or even if I had Feeding Frenzy. So what do we then support the actual um, Wretch Defilers with? The PUB that I'll be linking is showing minion damage, obviously, but the, the important ones we're going to talk about is Spell Echo, which is obvious, uh, you know, very logical. The other part is returning projectiles, which is covering your entire screen with projectiles. So for this to work, you need Pierce. So those two are super, super important. And then we run a faster projectile. And so the faster projectile is also, again, to cover as much ground on the screen as possible. Now, it is very beneficial to use faster projectiles for the simple fact that faster projectile is actually giving you increased damage output. Returning projectile is not the best for single target, but Pierce is also one of those support gems that actually gives increased damage, which is not the best. So if you want to optimize your specters for single target damage output, you will actually need to use, since they've removed the Vorici white color sockets uh, approach to the game, use omens that drops or purchase to color white sockets. You need to remove the returning projectiles and turn it into a predator support. If you want to be really picky, you could also change the faster projectile or the pierce uh, for a gem such as um, in lightning penetration or slower projectile. It's up to you how many gems you actually want to swap for optimal damage output. Now, you might notice that we're not using greater volley or GMP, despite the fact that those support gems do not actually alter the trajectory of the projectiles. This is because very often they were missing quite a few of the projectiles as it is already. So adding more to them would just increase their fan and make more projectiles miss, whilst the projectiles that actually are hitting are doing, dealing even less damage, making this a net loss of DPS output. So this was the best way for us to find a middle ground and have them actually do really well. Clearing, fantastic, even on a four specter setup where three of them are defilers. It's what I've been playing on stream, doing tier 16 maps, having a very comfortable experience with that right now, despite the horrific gear I'm running. Perkle's toe helps the lucky hit with the lightning uh, damage output, and we cannot use a support such as volatility because that's an attack support, and these guys are casting uh, spells. 
So that's basically what we have so far. I do not have a Ray Inspector Helmet PUB yet. That is because I'm trying to set it up first so I can play test it. I don't want to give you a mock-up that is just a base of theoretical information. I wish uh, I really want this video to give you black and white 100% transparency and uh, you know all cards to the table. This is the best and I can guarantee it and put my name on this and say with confidence that you have been given accurate information. Now, I will say this, though, that there are still specters that look theoretically very, very bad that we are still testing since there have been cases in the past where a specter that looks theoretically bad have been the best to use, such, such as the Syndicate operatives. So we will be verifying if there's something hidden we've missed, but as of now, this is the best setup that we can get. So a quick recap. Damage dealing specters, you will start on very low budget or leveling even to use moon dancers. Once you reach a point where you can have four specters, you want to use the wretch defilers instead as your main source of damage if you want that to be from your specters. When you go four specters, you will use one of them to be a spectral leader instead. However, if you're running support specters, the best support specters for generic damage approach or poison or chaos, what you would want to run is a spectral leader an Arena Master, a War Caller, and a Pale Seraphim in almost every case. The only time this switches is to basically push this entire list so that the Spectral Leader is the second, Arena Master is the third, and the War Caller is the fourth, and the first one being whatever minion support you have for a specific element, mostly talking about Lightning being Primal Rex Matriarch and Cole being Primal Crush Claws to increase the damage output from those approaches. And even then, I would still say that the Spectral Leader should be the number one option when it comes to this. One little detail besides this is that if you are unable to, uh, if you are unable to um, find these Spectres, you can always swing by the Global 6666 channel in which myself and many other are sharing these Spectres for free, of course. With the, with the assumption that you also help share them with other people in the channel. Besides this, you can pick up the tier 17 specters from any tier of maps. And the way we do that is by specking into the invasive adversaries. The very top in the middle of the Atlas Passage tree is a node that says your maps contain 10% more monster packs consisting of difficult and rewarding monsters. If you spec into this node, you can just spam up a handful of tier 1 maps and you will eventually actually see your tier 17 specter as well. This is how we were able to pick them up early on in the league. And some of us, like myself, were buying the tier 17 maps to pick these out to test. But this is one way of achieving this moving forward, which is much cheaper and much easier to do than buying some tier 17 maps. Um, when it comes to the all flame specters, if you're playing solo cell found or you don't want to have help getting them from the global channel, uh, you would have to engage with a league mechanic. So when you engage with a league mechanic, that is one way to get yourself the actual approach of these um, specters that is only for the league specific uh, encounters right now. And this pretty much concludes this entire video. I hope this is of use of you uh, for you, and I really hope that um, the spectral leader will stay as strong as it is right now because having action speed buff is absolutely insane. One little detail, though, before finalizing this is the fact that you want to keep track of your Spectral Leader by simply looking at his HP. He is the squishiest of all of these Spectres. Unlike the Moon Dancer, who is built like a tank, Spectral Leader is built like a piece of paper. This means that some investments on your tree to minion survivability is definitely needed. This is also a very effective way for us to have an extremely strong buff that non-minion build players will not be able to reliably maintain because if you don't have investments to your minion survival, this guy will not survive. I think that's a pretty cool way to do it in terms of balancing, but that's about it. If you think I missed anything or if you like this video, like I said before, please do consider liking and subscribing and let me know in the comments below what you guys think of it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So till then, as always, stay safe, keep rocking.